everyone, I'm Julian Baez. I'm a faculty member over in Africana, Puerto Rican and Latino studies. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here because there are some visuals that I wanna share with all of you. Um, so I have to say this, I love that book for so many reasons. I love it because um, it's a book that you could read and you could just implement one or two things and immediately, right? Um, without having to give too much thought to it. Um, and you can experiment and play around and figure out what works and what doesn't. Um, and I love too that it is written from the vantage point of CUNY students, um, because I am a believer that we have a very distinct student population. That has been my experience as someone who has also taught at places that are not CUNY. Um, and um, in my case, I have to say, since we read that in January, I've taught a number of different kinds of courses um, where some of the suggestions, you know, are appropriate and some of them less appropriate. Um, and so I wanted to focus mine, my presentation on um, something that I did across the classes, regardless of whether they were 100 level classes um, or higher level courses, or even um, I I run our field work um, course where I only meet with the students twice that semester and it's via Zoom. Um, and this is something that I still do with them. Um, and so I have I have wanted I wanted to talk with you today about check ins. Um, this is something that I began doing during the pandemic. Um, thanks to Xiao. Larry, I also am a big fan of Xiao and I'm so grateful that she is our colleague here. Um, and so one of um, the tips that Xiao had shared at the height of, you know, um, that horrible first semester during the first pandemic when we were all teaching in crisis is, you know, Xiao had introduced this idea of doing check-ins, right, in order to um, just build community in the online classroom. And um, when we went back to being in person, I stopped doing that um, because I, I hadn't done it before the pandemic and I didn't think I thought, I don't know if I thought it was a waste of time, but I didn't know how necessary it was. Um, and then this past year, I discovered um, that I think that building rapport in the classroom is very important. Um, and so I spend five to 10 minutes doing one of these activities every week with my students. Um, and, you know, and some are more quieter than others. Um, they don't, you know, they're low stakes. Um, and I use them to just get the students warm, meaning like get them to start talking build rapport and also get them ready to do the deeper work we do later on in class. I find that this makes them a bit more open to constructive com criticism, whether it's from myself or their peers. Um, and so I wanted to share just a few of my favorite check-ins. Um, so this one I borrowed from Shao, um, although this is a different image I use. Um, but the idea here, and you can practice doing this if you wanna open up your chat box, is I ask the students, um, to take a look at this color palette and to name which color they're resonating with today and why. So I'll give you a moment. Okay, perfect. Yes, yeah, Stephanie says true blue looks powerful and calm. Jennifer says avocado green looks so calm. Um, and this is good because it just kind of gets them into the space of checking in with where they're at. Um, I know so many of my students come into the classroom, um, you know, just disheveled from the commute and rushing and the trains were late. And this gives them a second to kind of figure out where they're at. Um, I like to do this one. It can be done any time of the semester, but I find it's also really helpful for when they start to get tired towards the end of the semester and really haven't checked in with themselves. Um, and I find that they're much more centered afterward. I, I also say too, it's also helpful if you share. I find that, um, you know, if you're asking them to be vulnerable, you may wanna be vulnerable too. <laughs> so I'm feeling a little lab brown today myself. Um, I'm drawn to that earthy color. Um, today I'm feeling pretty grounded, um, but not necessarily bright or vivid. Um, so that's one. Uh, another one that I have the students do, um, a lot of times you'll hear this one referred to as Rosebud Thorn. Um, and this is where you give them a chance to think about um, what's going on in their life that semester. Um, so I ask them, um, and you know, the visual here, right, being to think of the rose. And so when the rose is in its full bloom, I ask them, you know, what's one success you're having this semester? So what's blooming for you this semester? 
what's one thorn, right? So a challenge, a difficulty that you've been facing this semester. And then what is one bud for you, right? So what is something that you're looking forward to, right? That hasn't happened yet, but you're in anticipation of. I'm going to press this and see if that works. Okay. You should still be seeing that rose thorn bud. Okay. Um, one of the other exercises that I do, um, and I always do this when it starts to get a little bit more hectic, and this is more he mental health oriented than the other two, um, is I ask the students to sit down for a moment. I ask them to take out a, a, a piece of paper and a writing utensil and write for a few minutes about what's one thing that, that's stressing them out right now and what's one way they can take care of themselves. Now, I want to say this. I try to I try to, you know, um, be trauma informed. And so I do tell the students to please for this focus on, um, you know, stressors that are lowercase stressors. So no capital T trauma. There's a space for that. But our classroom isn't I'm not equipped to do it. I, I do a whole disclaimer with that. And I recommend that you might too, because this, our students just have so many things going on that you never know what could come up. Um, but I try to ground this in terms of like, what is one thing that's stressing them out right now in the context of their classes? right in the semester. Um, and then that one way that they can take care of themselves. Um, I have the students share some of those. Um, and I find that they learn quite a bit. And some of those are really basic things like making sure that they take their water bottle with them everywhere, making sure that they're sleeping enough. Many of them don't sleep enough. And you know, when we don't sleep after a while to sleep with the sleep deprivation, it's hard to process, right? Let alone be really successful um, in your academic work. So that is one exercise that I do. And then last but not least, this is something that I pulled um, directly from the book that I started employing in a number of my courses in order to get us going with the reading. Um, and this is also, I think, you know, building off of what Larry had brought up with the think pair share. Um, I usually do this after check-in, right? So we'll do, you know, a quick five, 10 minute check-in and um, to start to process the readings, I'll have them, I'll put a timer on and I'll have them just talk for five to 10 minutes, depending on how intense the reading was. And they talk about what did they notice and then what questions came up for them, right? What did you wonder? And this really gets us going. I, I have noticed a big difference between when we start with this particular exercise versus opening coldly and trying to have a Socratic conversation discussion about the reading. Um, so this I highly recommend to not necessarily as the opening check-in, but as the segue to start to get into the material.